Hello, hello, sidekick survivors, Kato Genesis here, bringing you another unique apparel and armor guide, this time going over the one-of-a-kind pieces you can get from your companions that you find throughout the Commonwealth. Following the same criteria as previous unique guides, there must be only one of the item in question, an explicit limited number or source, but there shouldn't be much for gray areas in this one. In this guide, I'll be covering the base statistics of this equipment, and most importantly, where to find them. And because all of this gear can be gained from companions, if they are able to trade with you, you need to only tell them to equip something else making their gear available to you. First we'll be looking at is Piper's outfit, the red leather trench coat, plus the press cap. If the main story quest is followed to Diamond City, we could find Piper Wright, the fiery journalist who wears this outfit, having trouble with the guards over the intercom. Or the mayor if you've already found Nick. She will become available as a companion if you agree to be interviewed by her, which in turn makes her outfit available. Starting with the press cap, this is a unique variant of the newsboy cap that will add a bonus to intelligence rather than charisma. The hat is also more red to match the rest of the outfit. As for Piper's red leather trench coat, it has an energy resistance of 5 and boosts charisma by 1 when you are wearing it. Even though armor cannot be layered over the trench coat, it is ballistic weave compatible if you've become friends with the railroad and found the proper DIA cache. Next is the corset, which is worn by Kate, the face-crushing Irish bird, who happens to be found in the combat zone, south of the Boston Common and Swan's Pond. To gain her as a companion, though, be ready for a fight. Once you are able to take on her contract, her armor is available for the taking, but doesn't offer too much when it comes to protection or statistics, giving the wearer just a boost to their endurance by one. Unlike the trench coats, however, armor can be layered over the top of the corset, so it has at least that going for it. Third is McCready's duster and hat, worn by our favorite lamplighter all grown up. Now a mercenary, he is found in the third rail in Good Neighbor. A merc through and through, McCready can be hired for 250 caps, which is negotiable if you have the charisma for it. After being hired just like that, his armor is available to you like the rest. McCready's green cap, like most hats in the game, doesn't provide any sort of damage resistance, but will raise the wearer's perception by one point. As for the duster, it grants a plus 5 to ballistic damage resistance and increases agility by 1. Just by how detailed this outfit looks, it makes sense that armor cannot be layered over the top of it, but McCready's duster is also ballistic weave compatible. Compared to the other companion outfits, McCready's looks to have the most detail as well. Next is the one that takes the most steps to get, and that would be the red frock coat and tricorn hat, worn by our ghoulish mayor of Good Neighbor, Hancock. When you first arrive at Good Neighbor, you are introduced to Hancock, but if you wish to have him as a companion, there's a few steps you need to take first. Wander around Good Neighbor long enough, and one of the guards will speak of Bobby No-Nos, looking for someone available for hire to help with the quest called The Big Dig. Be sure the quest ends in Hancock's favor and he will become your companion eventually. At this point you would know that Hancock is a pretty charismatic fella even for a ghoul, so his outfit does reflect that, the tricorn hat giving a bonus of 1 to charisma, while the red frock coat will give an energy resistance of 5 with 1 point to charisma and perception. Hancock's outfit is also the third and last on this list that is ballistic weave compatible. Last to go over is a bit of a strange one, the Colonial Duster, excluding the Minuteman hat because other Minutemen wear them. So Preston Garvey is wearing the only Colonial Duster you will find on an NPC, and being he is the easiest companion to gain as well at the beginning of the game, that is the easiest way to obtain the Duster. The only other way to gain one is by finding Anne Hargraves at the WRVR broadcast station, recruiting her to one of your settlements, and assigning her to a level 3 clothes emporium, making as many of these Colonial Dusters available to be bought. But of course, not all of us are going to want to jump through that many hoops just to get a duster. So if you would like the Colonial Duster, just get Preston as a companion and take it from him. He will forgive you, I'm sure. For the statistics of the Colonial Duster, extremely basic, it is a damage resistance of 5, with no additional attribute boosts, and also not ballistic weave compatible. If you're going for functionality though, everything prior from other companions will serve you quite a bit better than the Colonial Duster. That Survivors is all the unique armor and apparel your companions happen to wear in the Commonwealth. If you're wondering about Strong, Deacon, and Nick Valentine, what they're wearing is relatively common, or just unwearable in Strong's case. Do you have a favorite set of companion armor to take and wear? Leave it in the comments, I would love to hear about it. If you found this guy useful, entertaining, or both, do whatever it is you see fit to show that. And if you want more guides like this, you know what to do. Thank you very much for watching, this is Kato Genesis, and may you wander the Commonwealth like you own it.